Hello, welcome to Week in Review on Trust Television. And on Week in Review, we'll take a look at some of the biggest stories that occurred in the last one week. My name is Martia Umar. Thank you so much for joining. We'll start with the story of the aviation shutdown. Last weekend, it was all about the shutdown. It caused a lot of panic at some point, but there was a suspension. So the news about the aviation shutdown was one of the biggest news that made rounds last week and then made some relevant agencies to come together. And when they came together, they had a consensus and the shutdown was eventually suspended. So following the suspension of the planned aviation shutdown by airline operators of Nigeria, number of work activities resumed at the nation's airports. The suspension of the strike, which was scheduled for Monday, May 9, 2022, over the increase in aviation fuel, followed calls from the government and relevant authorities promising to address the situation. And Trust TV's correspondent Gazi Yakubu was at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, and he filed in this report. Take a look. The planned action was primarily because of the increase in the price of aviation fuel from 190 naira per litre to 700 naira. Staffs of the Nnamdi Azikiwe International Airport said the declaration of the now suspended aviation strike has affected their usual tone out at the airport. Most of us didn't supposed to come work today because of the rumour we heard yesterday. But at least this way we work our, and our daily Morning. So we have to come and witness what is happening. And to be sincere, when you came everywhere can see cities, most of us have gone back home. And right now, even me, I'm going back to my house. And because of the rumor, people are not able to come out today. But there's nothing like strike. They call it off yesterday. So people that have activities tomorrow, next tomorrow, they came to Abuja yesterday or Sunday because of that. So that is why I looked around everywhere so scanty. They, however, hope that the relevant authorities will swing into action to avert a similar situation in the future by addressing the issue raised by the airline operators of Nigeria, since any future strike, if not NIP and the board, will have a devastating effect on their means of livelihood. See, in 70 percent of Nigeria, we leave base when we come out and also for the day. That is why we survive for now. It's only 20, 30 percent that even though they do not work two days, three days, it will not affect them. But present Nigeria now, everybody knows what is going on with the scarcity and everything in this country now. We live in daily hustling. When you hustle, your family will eat. If you don't hustle, your family will not eat. That is why in any daily, anything that will affect us for one day, we'll try to avoid it. The management said a decision was reached by relevant authorities to address the price of aviation fuel before the action was called off. None of the airlines are grounded as they have continued their usual activities. Gaza Yakubu, Trust TV News, Abuja. And after dealing with the aviation fuel issues, the week started with fuel scarcity as well. In an interview with our correspondent, motorists called on the federal government to find a lasting solution as fuel scarcity so faced again in the federal capital territory and neighboring states. Trust TV's Kabir Lawal was at some filling station to hear from consumers that have spent hours waiting to buy the commodity. Take a look. There's indication that the scarcity of petrol and product has resurfaced again. Motorists are seen in long queues trying to buy the product, which is proving difficult. More so, the impact of the scarcity is especially felt by commuters who pay high price to be transported from one place to another. To me, this is totally unacceptable. But the fact that we don't even know what caused the scarcity, where right? the scarcity is coming from until now, we don't even know. How can someone wake up in the morning? going driving to work all of a sudden discovers that just hold up everywhere in all the filling station even most filling station that are full are not selling that i do not know until now but i'm sure i'm very very convinced that a whole lot of filling stations here in abuja have fuel traffic gridlocks appeared across major parts of abuja as many service lanes were closed to traffic due to queues from the petroleum stations Consumers of the product told Trust Television that they left their various houses in the early hours to queue up at the filling station to get the commodity, but to no avail as they are still in the queue waiting for their turn. Some consumers further revealed that they had to tip full attendance to be able to buy the product. I feel very bad because what we are suffering in Nigeria because of resources is very bad. 
We are really suffering a lot. To get a fuel for your for your working or what you are using a fuel for is very is very expensive for us in Nigeria. We that is the citizen of Nigeria, and we that is the we don't have anything, and we are the ones suffering most in Nigeria. It's very bad. We can't continue this. This country needs to be changed. We need to change. We need changing in the country because the country is very going is go is really going very bad situation that we the poor ones cannot even get anything. I come here to sell in the morning, seven six o'clock in the morning. This is now I'm going back. Even even before I go back, I paid bribe before they give me this fare. It's shocking to me that uh, I just woke up yesterday evening to discover that we're experiencing scarcity. I don't know where it's coming from, but I think um, something um, really fast needs to be done. They said these fuel scarcity will affect food prices in the market as transporting these food items is also expensive. Most people slept here overnight and they are still not happy. And everybody have been talking their ordeal about the fuel scarcity presently going on in Abuja. In Abuja, Kabir Lowell, Trust TV News. Meanwhile, the Group Managing Director, Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, Malikyari, has disclosed that they are maximizing petroleum supply in order to bring the fuel scarcity in Abuja and other places to an end. He disclosed this while speaking after a meeting with the House at her committee on a state of refineries on Tuesday. He said that they are also taking measures to curb the activities of black marketers who take advantage of the situation to further subject Nigerians to hardships. Carrie assured that the NMPC has put modalities in place to ensure that people do not stay too long in fuel stations. But as at Friday, when we went round Abuja, the reverse is the case because we still saw long queues in different filling stations in the suburb and the city centers of the Federal Capital Territory. But from away from fuel issues, let's take a look at the education se sector where students of the University of Ilorin have staged a protest calling on the federal government to yield to the demands of the striking academic staff union of universities, ASU. The protest, which was held in front of the university gates without hindering vehicular movement, followed the three-month strike extension by ASU. And with placards, the students are particularly unhappy that the federal government has not allowed to strike uh, has, has allowed the strike rather to, to continue unabated. They said that they are tired of sitting at home and called on the government and asked it to come to an amicable resolution in the interest of the nation. The students threatened to shut down the country as should the federal government and ASA refuse to resolve the issue by the week. It is no longer in news that we are spending over 80 days at home. We are spending over 80 days at home see the lingering as we strike. And that is why the leadership of the students in the University of Illinois have sat back, consulted, and decided to stage a protest where we can inform the federal government and the respective ministers via social media to let them know that we are tired of staying at home. We have graduates that are tagged and graduate. They cannot graduate. And that is why we have decided that if we do today, Next week, federal government is meeting ASUS National Executive. Let them come to a common ground next week. If they don't come next week, we will come back to the streets, and that time is going to be very tough. Well, uh, the effect has been enormous because um, apparently I've been at home. I've spent nothing less than two years in one level since 2020. I spent two years in 400 level. I'm spending another two years in 500 level again. And uh, I've been paying rent. Even in, in this of, of, of these four years, I've been paying rent. I keep paying rent. Um, I, I keep spending money as a student. And even the, the effect is, is, is beyond personal, uh, uh, personal, personal pain. problem of ASU still biting very hard. But if you're just joining us, you're watching Week in Review on Trust Television. We'll go for a break, but more stories after this short timeout. Stay with us. As the 2023 elections draw near, remember, evil prospers when good men and women only wish for peace, but never take a step to make peaceful elections happen. Are you a father? Are you a mother? What are you saying to your children as elections approach? Have you warned them not to let themselves be used to cause violence? Have you explained to them 
what the consequences of electoral violence might be. Do your part to make peaceful elections happen. Talk to your children. Protect them from unscrupulous politicians who want to put them in harm's way while their own children are comfortable at home, within and outside the country. Let's join hands to make 2023 elections peaceful. This message is from the National Orientation Agency, NOAA. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching Week in Review on Trust Television. And moving on to more news, operators of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Balji Command, have arrested 52-year-old Kabiru Abdullahi for alleged kidnapping and killing his neighbor's five-year-old daughter after collecting a ransom of 150,000 naira. The suspect, who is a resident of Narabi, in Toro local government area of the state, is said to have connived with one Yawale, a 45-year-old resident of Rimin Zayam, in same area to commit the crime. Adamu Imam filed in this report. Take Parading the suspect at the command's headquarters, the state commandant Nuruddin Abdullahi told journalists that the suspect kidnapped the victim in front of their father's house and took her to a bridge where they strangled her and put the remain in sack and, and put the remain in a sack and buried her in an uncompleted kitchen. Uh, this happened on 23rd April 2022 at 1900 hours information was received on the alleged kidnapping of of a five year five years old girl named Khadija Abdullahi, popularly known as Ilham, at Sabon Garin Narabi, for a local government, Ochi State, swung into action and arrested the following suspect. Kabir Abdullahi, a male, 52 years of Narabi village, and uh, Alhaji Awale, male, 45, of Rimin Zayan, all into a local government. He noted that after a series of negotiations, the suspect were paid the sum of 150,000 naira as ransom, which was collected by Al Haji Awali in the bush at Narabi village. The father of the deceased, Abdullahi Yusuf, said he was shocked when he discovered that his trusted friend and neighbor was a killer. We came from God and we surely return unto him. This man tied my daughter's neck with a rope until she died. We had to cut the rope with a knife. I had decided to bury her like that, but people around prevailed on me to give her a decent burial. So we had to take her body and bury in a nearby cemetery. That gave me some relief. In another development, Abdullahi told journalists of the arrest of two suspects, Isia Lawal of Deriko village and Musa Ado of Babale village, near Jos, the Plateau state capital, and assured that the command will not rest on its oaths until crime is brought to the barest minimum in the state. At the minimum, Trust TV News, Bauchi. And still talking security, residents of Agulu, Anuacha local government area in Anambra state have raised the alarm over insecurity in the area. This followed the death of a resident of the community, Ms. Onyinye, who was the victim of a stray bullet during a recent gunfight between the army and a known gunman. The resident insists that the setting up of a checkpoint at the heart of Ekulobia is wrong as similar incidents have occurred in the past to political. Turning uh, uh, the checkpoint in front of our unit, even if they are, they are going to be, there should be some better places. To put them. Let's say at the boundary town. We have boundary between Nago and Nanka, we have with uh, Nisle and other towns. So we're putting them right in front of the, the unit at the heart of the town. So yes, we have written several and we have made physical visitation to different military authorities 
appealing to them that the position is wrong for them to remove it. And uh, some of them promised us that they are going to relocate it. But after promising us, what happens is still happening. So we want to use this opportunity to beg them to uh, act according to what they promised us. And to some political events that occurred in the past one week, the President, Mohamed Buhari, has ordered all members of the Federal Executive Council contesting elective positions in 2023 to resign on or before Monday, May 16th, 2022. And the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohamed, announced this on Wednesday while briefing State House reporters on the outcome of the Federal Cabinet meeting at the Council Chambers of the Presidential Villa in Abuja. He said only Vice President Yemio Sibajo, as an elected official, was exempted. Shafi Suleiman tells us more about the development. Section 84, subsection 12 of the Electoral Act 2022 provides that no political appointee at any level shall be voting delegate or be voted for at a convention or congress of any political party for purposes of nomination of candidates for any election. Following the appeal court judgment, the Federal Executive Council directed ministers with political ambition to resign. All members of the Federal Executive Council aspiring to run for office, either be it president or governor or national assembly, must resign from cabinet effectively by the 15th, sorry, by the 16th, which is Monday. Minister of State for Education, Chukwame Kanwajuba, is first to quit the cabinet to pursue his presidential ambition. Others with presidential ambition likely to follow suit are Transportation Minister Rotimi Amechi, Labour and Productivity Chris Ngege, Minister of Niger Delta Affairs Godwill Akpabio, Science and Technology Ogbonaya Onu, and Minister of State for Petroleum Timipri Silva. Others are Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice Abubakar Malami, who wants to contest Kebbi State governorship election as well as Women Affairs Minister Pauline Tyler, who is expected to resign to pursue a senatorial ambition in Plato State. Commenting on the appellate court's position with voided deletion of the section in the Electoral Act, a constitutional lawyer, Sam Pago, says it is a signed legal interpretation. When you go to court to ask for a declaratory relief, when you are not in any way connected to the issue and the issue is not even ripe, it becomes an academic exercise. The gentleman who took the matter to court was not in any way a political appointee. This time around, surprisingly, we have ministers and other political appointees, including Central Bank Governor of Nigeria, disrespecting this legal prohibition that compels them to resign. GP executives of parastatals and other government agencies with political aspirations may also resign to pursue their ambitions. Shapiro Suleiman, Trust TV News, Abuja. And even before the sad date, about nine ministers have resigned. And of course, if there are more ministers resigning, we'll be bringing you all of these updates as we continue on the program. But meanwhile, the Nigerian Senate has re-amended for a third time uh, the Electoral Act 2022 to include provisions which enables statutory delegates to vote at the congresses or conventions of political parties. This followed the expeditious consideration of a bill during plenary, which scaled first, second and third readings, and was passed during plenary by the chamber after consideration by the committee of the whole. Take a look at the report. Those identified as statutory delegates include the president, the vice president, members of the National Assembly, governors and their deputies, members of the State Houses of Assembly, Chairman of Council, councillors and National Working Committee of Political Parties, among others. 
The bill to amend the 2022 Electoral Act No. 13 was sponsored by the Deputy Senate President O.V. Omo Agege. Omo Agege, in his presentation, said the bill seeks to amend the provision of Section 84, Subsection 8 of the Electoral Act. According to him, the provisions of the section do not provide for the participation of what is generally known as statutory delegates in the conventions, congresses, or meetings of political parties. My profound pleasure to have the privilege of leading the debate on this very important bill. We seek to amend the Electoral Act 2022 to make provision for delegates who have not been elected ad hoc delegates as prescribed in the constitution of a political party and the Electoral Act to participate in the convention, congress or meeting of the party. Supporting the amendment, a cross section of lawmakers said without the amendment, most of them will not have the opportunity of voting during the conventions. Mr. President, I think this is a very straightforward and very simple uh, amendment. Because without this amendment, most of us would not uh, have the liberty of voting during the party's convention. But having said that, Mr. President, we still have a lot of you know, sections in the Electoral Act that we need to look into. This error, which led to us coming back to look at the correction, was something that happened inadvertently. I don't think it was the intendment of this Hano Chamber, neither was it the intendment of those who perfected the document to send to Mr. President. But I believe in the course of a work like this, things like this are bound to happen. And I think this one is no less one of them. And that is why we are trying to do this amendment to ensure that what the political parties are known to do by allowing statutory delegates, in addition to the delegates that will be elected by the various political parties, constitute the electoral college for all the elections that we talk about. Speaking of the passage of the bill, President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawa, explained that the amendment became imperative in view of the deficiency created by the provision of Section 84, Subsection 8 of the Extant Act before the party primary starts in the next eight days. A bill for an act to amend the Electoral Act 2022 and for other matters connected there to 2022 third reading taken. And the bill is passed. Uh, thank you very much, uh, distinguished colleagues. Let me explain a little bit what we have done. The Electoral Act of 2022, or the amended uh, Electoral Act of 2022 that we passed this year, has a deficiency that was never intended and that deficiency will deny all statutory delegates in all political parties from participation in congresses and conventions. The National Assembly has to finish with the processing of the amendment on the bill on Tuesday in the Senate, Wednesday in the House of Representatives, why the executive is started to give assent within the week. And still talking about the election, in the week of the last week, we heard st stories of news about the former president of Nigeria, good luck, Jonathan, have been given the presidential form. And at some point, it was debunked. And then later in the week it was that he got the he got the presidential form he was to run on the the ruling party the all progressive congress but governor david omahi of abonyi state has expressed concern over the kind of messages the ruling all progressive congress apc will be telling nigerians with former president goodluck jonathan as its presidential candidate the governor spoke on Tuesday while fielding questions from State House reporters after meeting with President Muhammadu Bahari at the presidential villa Abuja to present a thank you later for South East leaders to him following his recent visit to Eboy. He wondered how the ABC would reconcile its policies and promises with those of the People's Democratic Party PDP under which Jonathan 
was president. He expressed worry that it will be difficult for the ruling party to campaign with Jonathan as its presidential candidate, adding that his entrance into the race for the APC presidential ticket will be germane in Nigeria's political landscape. Uh, it will, for me, become one of the wonders you know, of uh, this century. Uh, the reason is that um, if you go and see the uh, campaign, uh, you know, uh, programs of APC, and uh, you now ask uh, Mr. President Jonathan to come and run, I don't know what will be our campaign promises and uh, what will be, you know, uh, the stories we'll be telling Nigerians. And uh, I believe strongly that he was not aware of, you know, the form. And uh, I want to believe that uh, people that are mischievous would have bought the forms to embarrass him. But uh, from what I read, he has quickly... Uh, you know, distanced himself, you know, from that. But like I said, if that is not the case, then uh, the uh, Guinness Book of Record is not totally filled up. And with that, we've come to the end of Week in Review for this week. Do not forget that for more updates, you have to follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Martia Umar. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. We'll see you again next time. Do stay tuned.